Hey garden lovers, it's WhitWithNatureHills.com back with our next region in our native plant series. Here's the scoop. More than one kind of plant can do well in an area, but natives always do the best. Adding them to your garden is always a good idea because they're built to handle the exact conditions that your region offers and it benefits the other plants, wildlife, and pollinators. So what is a native? A native is a plant that naturally occurs in a region and is connected to the ecosystem. While cultivars and hybrids are great for different foliage, longer flowering, or smaller sizes, the native species are the ones attracting the beneficial insects. Sometimes a native plant that has grown where it's not native but still does well is considered an introduced plant. These naturalized trees, shrubs, and perennials can sometimes become invasive in areas where there is no competition. Luckily, when you're shopping with us, Nature Hills relies on regulations and compliance software Plant Century to ensure you're only able to ship plants that meet federal, state, and local regulations. Now that we've got a good idea of what natives are, let's jump right into our favorite natives for the Northeast. If you're in the Northeast and looking for some plants that work with and benefit your local ecosystem and pollinators, these are great options. But as always, if you like more localized recommendations, talk to your state agricultural extension office. They're always happy to help and know your region best. Number five, black chokeberry. The native black chokeberry is not only a unique source of fruit, it's also one of the best shrubs at thriving through bitter Northeast winters. It's one of those options that really has it all for your landscape and ecosystem. White spring flowers, green round form, healthy fruit that you can either use in your baking or let the local birds snatch, and showy fall color. These shrubs thrive in dry conditions and drought, as well as damp areas or rain gardens, and grow three to six feet tall, so plant them as hedges and front and backyard accents. Number five, black chokeberry. Growing zones three through eight, pretty ornamental white flowers, delicious superfruits, and cold hardy. Number four, water iris versicolor. The water iris versicolor is a great wetland native that has a flower as pretty as some of the most engineered cultivars. The purple and yellow flowers with white and blue touches can be seen waving high over strong, upright green stems and foliage. These perennial plants are spread by rhizomes in the garden bed and border or in a rain garden. At two to three feet tall, Versicolor packs a colorful punch well above its weight class. Number four, Water Iris Versicolor. Growing zones three through nine, vibrant native perennial and a fantastic pop of color for smaller gardens. Number three, Bee Balm. Bee Balm, sometimes called wild bergamot, has fanciful flowers like crowns that bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds love. The scented leaves and tall stems are spread by rhizomes, so they'll show up as small clusters in your garden. Use them to complete a cottage garden as a native addition to your cut flower varieties or as an addition under the window so that you can enjoy the butterflies and the bees that stop by for a snack. If you're feeling crafty, try making some tea. Number three, bee balm. Growing zones three through nine, delightfully fragrant and a versatile addition to your garden. Number two, cardinal flower. Tall red flowers on slender stems, the cardinal flower is a hummingbird magnet that also feeds the bees. Each flower lasts a long time as it blooms from the bottom to the top. Personally, I think this is one of the showiest perennials as the vibrant red can be paired with any other colors to create a brilliant collage. Cardinal flower gets two to three feet tall, but just under two feet wide. They'd be as welcome in the butterfly garden as they would be in a rain garden or a native wetland. Number two, Cardinal Flower. Growing zones three through nine, brilliant red blooms and makes a great back of the border wildflower. And coming in at number one is the Common Witch Hazel, which in my opinion is anything but common. Depending on how it's pruned, witch hazels can be both a tree or a shrub and it has unique leaves and an impressively late blooming flowers that look a little bit like yellow pom-poms during the fall and winter months. Yes, these bloom in October and continue to be showy well into winter. Growing 15 to 20 feet tall and wide, witch hazel shrubs grow in full sun or partial shade and tolerate just about any soil conditions. Long before any of us were filling out our gardens, Native Americans were using the forked branches to find water. These days, we plant them to give shelter to the local wildlife and marvel at their strange yellow flowers. Number one, common witch hazel. Growing zones four through eight, fascinating yellow pom-pom flowers in the late fall and a great privacy screen. Do you live in the Northeast and have a favorite native that I didn't mention? Let me know down in the comments. If you didn't see a native that fits your fancy, I suggest heading on over to our site. We have natives categorized by state that you can look through. Simply pick your state and start shopping for local natives. Or check with your local extension office as they'll also have some great ideas for you. If you'd like to learn more about the difference between natives, nativars, and cultivars, we have just the information for you. 
or maybe you're looking for some care instructions for some of the plants we mentioned above. We have all that and more over on our hashtag ProPlantTips blog. I'll link to some of the resources found in the description. If you've enjoyed our video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you want more plant info and inspo, check out our Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter pages. And until next time, happy planting!